More about the people thoughts thing. <laughs> yeah, let's I go guess for I, that one. I just, I, I really like the, the conversation around it, but you seem like a people, sort of, and I, oh, is, your, <laughs> is your experience that you're not a people or something, or like what, what, my experience is that I'm sort of a people, kind of, you know? I mean, I, believe, I also see, I've had those fun times, you know, lots of them, and I love it, but my experience is that I'm a people, and I'm wondering if yours is different. That, that's pretty cool if it is. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, it's, this whole people thing, it fades pretty quick. Uh, you know, after a while you're like, mm, it's just not fun being a person anymore. You know, you, you don't buy the construct of happy person, sad person, spiritual person, enlightened person, avatar person. You know, we have fun with that. That's what we talk about at our messengers meeting. We'll talk around and messengers are all talking and it's like, yeah, we don't really like the word anymore. Messengers, messengers. I mean, let's try something new. Avatar. Let's be avatars. You know? I said, no, no, I'm not into it. It's just reinventing, you know, reinventing things. We don't, we have so many spiritual words, you know, for different echelons and hierarchies and after a while, you know, you say, no, that's, that's actually all still part of the people game. It really doesn't there's no fun in any of that. I mean, I was just down, I was over in China, and I did a big gathering. It was like 200 and some people in Shanghai. And then I went down to uh, Hainan, an island down, it's, it's like the Hawaiian kind of island. It's real glitzy and whatever down in the southern part of China. And I was down there. And I, I gave a, talked a few words. I'm just happy, my, my regular happy, happy self. And then um, I opened it up to questions and the one, the first question was, oh, I went to your gathering in Shanghai and I got absolutely nothing from the gathering. I didn't feel any sense of gaining anything, no sense of, of advancement, um, absolutely nothing. And I'm, I'm wondering, the, the questioner said, this young man said, he said, so I'm wondering what I'm doing here, uh, if you are going to uh, provide me something down here. I said, no, absolutely not. I said, if you hang around me, you will seem to lose everything that you believe in. Uh, the Holy Spirit, really quick, just boom, boom, boom. Oh no, if you hang around me, you're not going to gain anything. You're not going to advance in any way. Uh, I'm not making any promises because I'm just not into the people game, you know. And everybody laughed. It was like 70 people down there. Seventy Chinese people laughing and laughing and laughing as the translation went through to them, but but you start to realize that 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 there really aren't any real perks in the people game. You know, it's it's a game of duality, and it's a game that really wasn't created by reality. So you're not going to find any real happiness in it. But the quicker you start to realize that that you can't play the game or any part of the game, you can't play any aspect of the game. You get so happy because you don't feel like a person anymore. You, you know, you don't identify with that. You, if you don't play the people game, you absolutely cannot be insulted. You think the spirit could be insulted, you know. You think you can like scream at the spirit. You're, you can't even think of a word because the spirit doesn't have any kind of attributes. You know, you're, uh, whatever, and then the spirit just can't relate, you know, it, it, the spirit can't relate to pain and suffering and doubt and misery and hesitation. The spirit can't, can't relate to time. I mean, some of you have watched Star Trek, you know, Star Trek movies and Star Trek episodes, you know, there's the original one and there's, you know, uh, Next Generation and Deep Space Nine and so on and so forth. Uh, Jason actually found a one of the Star Trek episodes, and this was like this was beyond to go where no man has gone before. You know, this was more of going where no person has gone before. He found an actually an episode where the characters come in contact with abstract light. Just they go through this like wormhole, and they go through this kind of vortex of energy, and they just come in contact with absolute, pure, abstract light. Absolute, abstract light and oneness. And when the people try to relate to the abstract light, the light can't understand them.
The light can't understand people. It just has no, it's just pure oneness. It just can't relate to people. But it's so loving that it tries to meet them where they believe they are. You know, it's, it's so loving that it tries. So what it does is it immediately starts to use the images from the man's mind of people. It starts to use, use the people images that the man believes in, the light is, using them to communicate with the man because the light can't understand what's going on. It, it, it's almost like the light has no species. There's not different kind of species. It's just pure oneness. So it's a cool episode. In fact, Jason put it together and then when he finished this, this little montage of, of the humans encountering this light, he called it the end of time. That's, I just love showing that. Maybe if we get a, a thing up here, we can show you, you guys that. It's a cool episode because the light doesn't understand romance. The light doesn't understand kissing. The light doesn't understand pleasure. The light doesn't understand competition. The, the humans try to teach the light about baseball. And the light can't understand baseball. Because the, the humans are so excited about you hit a ball between these two lines and you don't know what's going to happen and it's so exciting. Every time the pitcher pitches the ball and the batter swings and hits the ball, it can go in one of unlimited possibilities in between the white lines and, and the lights, you know, like, got the look like. You know, it's like. It's not excited by baseball. It's not excited by comp In fact, it's trying to explain, the people are trying to explain baseball to the light, and the light goes aggressive, adversarial. That's, you know, which it doesn't relate to, you know, it just was kind of dismissing them as a, it's the whole thing. It's not interested in the fascination. And the guy's like, but it's so exciting. He's trying to explain to the light how exciting it is. You never know with every pitch, you never know what is going to happen next. It's explaining the excitement of the human condition to the light. You never know what's going to come next. And the light says, you value your ignorance of what is to come? <laughs> That's how the light answers the egoic excitement of baseball. The light says, almost like, you value your ignorance of what is to come? Like you're playing a game of time and space where you're playing hide and seek with yourself and you're pretending like you don't know everything and you're pretending like you don't know all the variables and factors and you think that's exciting? <laughs> you think that's exciting? Some of you probably enjoyed watching a comedian called George Carlin because George Carlin had the Holy Spirit ripping through him with some beautiful language as well. <laughs> and what he was doing was he was dismantling what? Everything. He would go after everything. There was nothing he wouldn't go after. And why did people laugh at George Carlin? Because there was a part of them inside that knew that he was talking about a lot of really truthful things. He was dismantling everything. And that's why people laugh when they see it. Because deep down inside, you know too that it's not true. That's what makes it funny. That's why I laugh when, I, when Jason's little mini-movie plays, I just laugh at it. You know, it, it, the light doesn't understand anything. There's one point where they're, they're, the, the human being, he's trying to explain human love and affection and having a child and, and kissing, and at one point there's a scene of the, the main character and the main character's wife kissing, and the lights, you should see the look on the face of the, man, of the character that the light is using. The light's going... <laughs> it, it doesn't know what a kiss is. Think of it for a moment. Why would abstract light have to know of a kiss? Why would perfect oneness have to know of a kiss? You know, it was so beautiful to see the light with the character going, because, because it absolutely couldn't relate. It was like, what's that? And it's, it's trying to understand, because it also was seeing that memory, you know, he had all these traumatic memories that he was trying to forget about. And the light was saying, but you're there. 
you're right in the middle of those memories. Those are all your memories. And it, the light was coming from a holistic perspective of all things being unified perception. You don't think that there's really good memories and bad memories in reality. Who would make up such a thing? You don't think abstract oneness would make up good memories and bad memories. What, what points would be dividing memories into good memories and bad memories? But what if all memories are equally false? That's right, the good ones and the bad ones. Did any of you ever watch that movie, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? Jim Carrey, Kate Win Winslet? You know, great movie. What's going on there is that there's the great deleter. Every single memory in their lives together is being deleted in that movie. And finally, near the end of the movie, they're sitting on the beach and Kate Winslet's character is saying, you know, Joel, this is the last memory. What are you going to do? Like, this is our last memory of us two as a couple, as, a, as being together. What are you going to do? And he goes, enjoy it. You, you actually start to flip around from trying to protect the memories and hold on to the memories and cling to all the memories of your linear life. And instead, you're ready for the great deleter to come in and wipe them all like the, like the mandala. Bring in the rake. What? Mom? Dad? Yep. Bring in the rake. What about all those childhood memories when I got my lollipop? Bring in the lake. The, the break. <laughs> Bring in the lake. <laughs> Bring in everything. You, <laughs> the lake too. All those lake memories. Get them out. You know, it's, that's what we mean by, that's true spirituality is empty your mind of everything. And you start to realize that you never really knew what was good and what was bad. That was part of the trick, dividing the world into good and bad, right and wrong. You know, what would the light know of morality? You know, all these controversies around morality. You know, somebody does an action, oh, that's not moral. Who says it's not moral? Who decides what's moral? It's part of that people game again. Only people are caught up into morality. But if you're into experiences, and you're into joy, true joy and, and love and happiness, then in the end you will transcend morality, and you will just be again into inspiration. And inspiration will lead you, not some kind of conceptual construct called good and bad, right and wrong. And isn't that wonderful? Do you, has anybody really enjoyed subjecting themselves to morality? Is there anybody that really has had fun with morality? I haven't. There's no fun. You do something, oh, that's, Im that's Im immoral. Well, who said so? Did the rocks say so? You know, did the rocks think it's immoral? You know, you start to really free yourself from that old way of thinking. And that's good. So I don't, the short answer is no, I don't feel like a people anymore. <coughs>